everybody, welcome back to my habitat. I'm Andrew Beauchamp, and as you may know, today we're doing cookie experiments. We I released a cookie video last week, a basic vegan chocolate chip cookie, and th in this video, we're taking that recipe and we're experimenting a little bit. The four experiments we're gonna be trying out today is number one, the aging of the dough. How does this cookie dough recipe hold up to being made a few days in advance? Number two, how does the way you scoop the flour determine the outcome of the cookie? Number three, the types of sugar you use. If you use more white sugar than brown, how is it gonna turn out? The fourth experiment we're gonna try on this recipe is to see if you chop chocolate into the batter, how is that gonna hold up versus just using plain old chocolate chips? So let's get into these. They all look great and delicious, but I wanna see which one I like the best. Experiment one, the aging of the dough. This dough right here has been aged for the last four days compared to this one, which was made late last night, so less than 24 hours ago. Now, not a whole bunch of difference between the two doughs, except obviously the aged dough has a lot more um, kind of caramel notes in color. And also, whenever you touch the dough itself, it has a little bit more lacticity to it. So maybe more uh, gluten has developed in the dough, very possibly. After you're done baking those doughs, these are the difference between the two of them. So this is the regular cookie, and this is the aged dough. Now the first thing, just by feeling them, the normal cookie has a lot more of a crust, where compared to the aged dough isn't as crusty on the outside and a little bit more cake-like. It also has some small air bubbles throughout the cookie where the normal cookie does not. It has more of a crust, a little bit more of um, a crackle effect than on the aged cookie. And of course, the only thing that truly matters though is how it tastes, so let's give this a bite. It still tastes really good. It tastes like a classic chocolate chip cookie, but I'm definitely missing that crunch on the outside. Experiment two. There is a big difference between these two cookies. Would you believe the only difference is how I scooped the flour? <laughs> That's literally the only difference. So this cookie is scooped in a way that I think most people scoop their flour. You have a measuring cup, you go into your bag of flour, and you scoop and you, you level off. Do the two scoop method. So first I scoop up with another instrument and then I pour that flour into my measuring cup just until it's filled and then I'll just use the handle of my spoon to level it off. Now, now whenever it comes to the two scoop method, there is a difference so much that I decided to actually weigh the difference. So whenever I did the two scoop method, I ended up getting 231 grams worth of flour after doing the two scoop method. But if I just went in with my measuring cup and then just leveled it off, I actually ended up getting 65 grams more of flour into that cup and it came out to 196 grams. So 65 grams of extra flour inside your cookie very clearly makes a huge difference. Whenever you have that extra flour, you have to work that extra flour into your batter meaning you have to work the flour even more and longer, which whenever it comes to baking is something you don't want to do because you can get a very dense cookie. But some people might like this, so I'm going to give it a try. Whenever you first take a bite of this cookie, it does have a nice crust on the outside, which I really like because I like the crust. But since they never had a chance to flatten out and the butter inside didn't, wasn't able to melt and flatten the cookie, you're kind of left with a lot of goo in the middle that isn't very pleasant. At least not to me. Some people love gooey centered cookies, but this is coming off almost as raw and a little pasty in your mouth, which I'm not a fan of. Experiment number three, switching out the sugars. So in this recipe, it calls for one cup of packed brown sugar and then three tablespoons of white granulated sugar. I decided to switch that up using one cup of white sugar and um, only three teaspoons or tablespoons rather of the brown sugar. And it obviously comes out with a much lighter dough. The cookies, once again, 
are a lot lighter. And even just holding them up, it almost looks like they haven't baked evenly, but that could just be because there's not as much color going on here. Well, let's try breaking it in half. Okay. So the air bubbles on the inside are a lot bigger too. I wasn't expecting that difference, but there's more air pockets within this cookie. I like the texture of this. It's, it's crunchy. It's, it's got that chew to it still, but it's lacking in flavor. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't have as much of a complex flavor because there's no brown sugar in there. So you don't have as much of those caramelized notes that you usually get from a chocolate chip cookie. So even though this is a great texture, it doesn't taste that good. The final experiment, cutting your chocolate into the batter. So there's no difference in the recipe here. It's all the same batter. The only difference is I use chocolate chunks and then chop them up quite finely with my knife. I still left some chunks in there. Like there's still pretty good chunks of chocolate in here. The reason why I like the chunks of chocolate and cutting it is because all those little chocolate shavings, the powdery chocolate that comes with cutting the chocolate ends up in your dough and it spreads throughout the dough, almost making it like a double chocolate cookie. The difference between the cookies, this one is the one that has the chopped chocolate in it, and this is just the classic chocolate chip. So you can see that there's a lot more uh, like hills and valleys in the regular chocolate chip where the chocolate chunk that I've chopped up is a lot more flat and more one note, but yet it's still darker and looks a lot more chocolatey. You can already see just from cutting it open, the midsection or the cut through of the cookie, there's a lot more chocolate. You can see chocolate in every inch of this cookie. My favorite cookie. Now, I will also say this cookie looks a lot more rich and more expensive compared to this cookie, in my opinion. It's a little bit more fatty simply because you're having a lot more little chunks of, you know, fatty chocolate because that's what chocolate is. It's fat. And then that melts in your tongue a lot faster, getting that flavor, hitting your palate. So pretty much you're doing more with less. And I love that. I want to thank you guys for watching some of these experiments today. I had a blast. I hope these help you make your ideal chocolate chip cookie. And well, until next time, stay hungry.